Hi everyone, this is Shannon with Center for Alaskan Coastal Studies and today we are going to be looking at an activity called Invent an Invert, where you will be inventing your very own invertebrate. And this is an activity that kind of looks at some animal adaptations, um, but also then gives us a little bit of space for some creativity and fun as well. So first of all, what is an invertebrate? Uh, invertebrates are animals that do not have backbones or spines. So we, as humans, have backbones. Uh, mammals, birds, reptiles all have backbones, so they are known as vertebrates. Uh, today we're going to be looking at invertebrates, so it's all of those animals that do not have a backbone, do not have that skeleton inside of their body. So uh, for us, we might be thinking about things like crabs or snails or sea stars, anything that doesn't have a spine. Uh, here in Homer, Alaska, a lot of the invertebrates that we have live in the intertidal zone, which means that they are in this really unique habitat uh, that is sometimes covered by water when the tide rises, and then they're left completely exposed when the water goes down during low tide. So these are animals that have a lot of challenges. As intertidal invertebrates, uh, you have to deal with getting hit by the waves, finding food, uh, trying to avoid predators. It's really not a very easy life. So a lot of these animals, um, because they live in this really challenging environment, have special adaptations to help them survive. So that means that they have special body parts or behaviors that allow them to live in this really unique environment that they have. So for example, uh, that could mean that the sea anemone is able to stick to rocks to keep it from getting washed around by the waves, uh, or it means a hermit crab is able to crawl inside of that nice hard shell to avoid being eaten by a predator. Those are examples of some adaptations that we might see here in the intertidal zone. Uh, now a lot more examples uh, can be seen in some of the other, the other videos that we're going to be posting, uh, but today for this video we're going to go ahead and move right along into inventing our own invertebrate. So for that, uh, we have two different options that you can do. One of them is that you can dress up and act out the invertebrate that you create using anything that you have around the house. Uh, so that might be a blanket or some pots and pans, uh, maybe some goggles, any kind of fun props that you have that you want to pull out and use to uh, represent any adaptations that your invertebrate has you can do that. Uh, the other option is using any craft supplies that you have and you can actually build your invertebrates. So uh, any pipe cleaners or cardboard or egg cartons or any like recyclable materials that you have around the house, uh, you can kind of pull together and use those to actually craft your invertebrate. Whichever option you choose, uh, we have a couple of guidelines to kind of help you think about the animal that you are making and making sure that it can survive wherever it is. So attached to this video, we will have a little worksheet and that worksheet has uh, a couple of prompts for you to kind of think about as you're making your animal. So some things that you will want to make sure uh, your animal has, first of all, is a name. You discovered your animal, therefore you get to name it. And if you really want to get creative, you can even give it a scientific name as well. We'll make it really official. Uh, what is the habitat that your animal lives in? Does it like to burrow down into the sand or does it uh, squeeze into the cracks and crevices of rocks? There are a couple of different habitats that these animals can have in the intertidal zone. So think about which one your animal might live in. Why does it like to live there? Uh, what does your animal eat and how does it get its food? So is your animal a predator that uh, looks for other creatures to eat or is it an herbivore that eats plants? Uh, what does it eat and how does it get that food? And also, how does your animal avoid being eaten? So who are its main predators and what does it do to protect itself? Um, what does your animal do to make sure that it doesn't dry out during low tide. So when we have that water drop and your animals are exposed to the air, there are lots of different things that creatures in this habitat will do to make sure that they don't completely dry out sitting out in the sun and the air. What does your animal do to make sure that doesn't happen? And then also when the tide is coming back in, sometimes we get really big waves. What does your animal do to make sure it doesn't get washed away by these big waves that sometimes come in? 
And finally, how does your animal move? There are lots of different ways that animals move around this environment. Maybe it has legs and it crawls around, maybe it swims, uh, maybe it kind of sticks to the rocks and glides around there. Figure out how your animal moves and um, tell us a little bit about that as well. So with all of this, we have a few final points that we want to leave you with. Um, first of all, this is your chance to get really creative. So yes, you can feel free to look at adaptations that you know exist and kind of meld them together into a really cool hybrid animal. Uh, but you can also get really creative and kind of make up some of your own adaptations, maybe something that you've never seen before, but you think would be really, really cool to find on an animal in real life. This is your creature. You can make it whatever you want. Uh, and finally, we see a lot of really, really fun and creative animals that come out of this activity, and we would love to see what you come up with. So if you would like, uh, you can share pictures or videos of you acting out this animal um, in the comments below this video. We will also be making one so that you can see what we came up with. Um, but this is a really fun time for us to kind of share some different ideas. Uh, so we hope that you have fun making your animal and we would love to see what you come up with. So let us know.